Merry Christmas and welcome to this time of worship. It is good to be with you in this way. If you're a visitor, please check out our website and click on the Connect page so that we can welcome you. It is good to have you here. We will be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion later in the service, so you're encouraged to make sure that you have bread or crackers and juice or red wine with you so that you can partake of that. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God on this Christmas Eve. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Tonight is Christmas Eve and tomorrow is Christmas Day. We proclaim that Christ is the light of our world as we now light our four Advent candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Finally, now we light the Christ candle, which is in the center of our wreath. With joyful hearts, let us pray. Glorious God, we sing with joy of your salvation in Jesus Christ, God of shepherds and angels, Mary and Joseph, Nazareth and Bethlehem, we open our hearts to welcome you. With all we do and say and are, we declare your glory and bless your holy name. For you are the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Glory and power and honor and might be yours now and forever. Amen.
Hi, my name is Katherine Tamaris. I'm in ninth grade, and I am part of youth group here at APC. As we turn to scripture, let us pray for understanding. Great God, as you came at night when all was still, so enter our lives this night. Illumine our paths with the light of Christ's presence, that we might clearly see the way before us, the truth to speak, and the life to live for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in, the, in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. The rejoice before you as with joy with, at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the opposer you have broken as the day of Medin. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire, for a child has been born to us. Sorry, I lost my line. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the first reading. Our second scripture lesson comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few summers ago, there was a total solar eclipse. Maybe you got to see it. 
I was in Ohio at the time, but my dad and a family friend and I drove to Tennessee so that we could experience it in totality. We left at midnight, drove for five or six hours, and ended up in the parking lot of a casino. As the morning went on, the parking lot filled up. More and more cars arrived, and you could feel the excitement building. When it finally happened, when the moon fully blocked the sun and cast a shadow on the earth, it was silent, except for the bugs and other animals that began chirping, thinking that it was dusk, even though it was the middle of the afternoon. It got dark, and the temperature fell, and everyone was in awe. As it started to get light again, people began to cheer this incredible experience that we had all just shared. We being the hundreds of strangers who had traveled from all over to end up together in this casino parking lot in the middle of Tennessee. Before seeing the eclipse, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really understand what would happen or why people were so excited about it until it was happening and then it was really exciting. And even talking about it now, I know that I'm not completely capturing what it was like and what it felt like. It's one of those things where you had to be there. You had to see it for yourself. It can't be fully described or explained. I think that the shepherds knew what that felt like. We just heard the story. They were in the field keeping watch over their flock on a typical night, when all of a sudden an angel appeared. They were understandably terrified by this development, so the angel tells them to not be afraid, because there is good news of great joy for all the people in the birth of a savior. They are told what the sign is, which might have seemed a bit odd, because it's a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. But then there are more angels and praising of God, and then the angels depart. The shepherds must have had an inkling of what this good news meant for them and for the world. I don't think they would have traveled to Bethlehem if they didn't believe that something incredible had taken place. But they had to go and see it for themselves. Even a multitude of the heavenly host could not replace the shepherds going and experiencing what had been made known to them. So they went to Bethlehem with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the sign of the child lying in the manger. They are amazed and they share what the angels told them, that this child is the Messiah, and everyone who hears this is amazed too. They make known to others what had been made known to them by God, sharing what they've seen and heard so that others might experience this wonderful news too. For many of us, the Christmas story is familiar. It's not really news to us. It might even be too familiar that when we read it or hear it, we overlook the wonder of this story and we don't fully fathom how extraordinary the incarnation is. But it is amazing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to dwell among us, the least and the lost. That God's love for us and for the world was made known as a baby wrapped in bands of cloth, born to a young, ordinary couple for whom there was no place in the inn, this baby who came to make room for all of us in God's kingdom. God's sign of promise and hope was not, was not a mighty warrior or a powerful king, as the people who were longing for a savior were expecting, but a newborn child lying in a manger. Because God does not operate according to our expectations or our understanding of power. God does not traffic in wealth or influence or connections. God turns our expectations and ways of being upside down. Jesus' birth was a proclamation of all things new. A new world, a new time, a new way of being and living. Not based on the status quo or business as usual, but on a radical reimagining of the world as it could and should be. Jesus' birth was an embodied promise of hope for a weary world, the good news of which would transform the lives of those 
who heard and experienced and believed. Hope, peace, joy, and love were made known to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds on that night long ago and are made known to us this night and every night in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Hope in the midst of weariness, peace in the midst of unrest, joy in the midst of despair, love in the midst of hate. Even in the middle of a pandemic, even in the face of loneliness and isolation and disrupted plans and traditions, when we are grieving and when we are joyful, when we are struggling and when life is going well, God's love is made known to us for, for us to experience for ourselves. Because our faith is one of mystery and wonder. From Jesus' birth to his death and resurrection and everything before and after, God is at work in unexpected and what seems to us sometimes confusing ways. It's not something that can be fully described or explained, despite the best efforts of theologians and others throughout the ages. It's not that having someone talk about their faith or reading the Bible on your own or even listening to a sermon can't be moving and powerful, but the Christmas story shows us in all of its awesomeness that we have to experience it for ourselves. It shows us what is real and tangible about our faith. In Mary and Joseph, weary after travel and desperate for a place to stay, it shows us God being born into the world as a baby and despite the hymns and carols we sing, we know that this was not a completely peaceful and silent night. It shows us shepherds on the margins of society, living and working in the fields by night. God's story and God's ways are grounded in these details, in the regular and incredible aspects of living. God does not exist in the abstract, but in the concreteness of the joys and sorrows of real life. In a manger, at a hospital bed, in a jail cell, around a table. Jesus' birth is the divine breaking into our earthly reality the extraordinary happening to ordinary people like you and me. Not the political elite, not the wealthy and powerful, but to a young couple and to some shepherds who experience something amazing and make it known to others. When I think about how we experience God and our faith, I think about the first Christmas and the rest of scripture which tells God's story and our part in it. I think about conversations with others and quiet prayers to God, about being part of a community and serving our neighbors. I think about art and worship and music and nature. God is made known to us in all of these ways and more so that we can experience God's transforming love for ourselves, letting it mold our hearts so that we can share that love with others through word and deed. Over this past year, we have witnessed the very best of our shared humanity and been confronted with the depths of our common brokenness when love and empathy and compassion have been lacking. And it is into this hurting world that God comes to dwell, comes to bring light, comes to be made known to us. I know we change the clocks every year, but I think the sun has been setting even earlier these past couple months. The nights feel longer and darker, so maybe you put up your Christmas decorations earlier than you normally would. Maybe you put up a few more strings of lights on your house. You're watching more Christmas movies and eating more Christmas cookies. Since I'm working mostly from home, the lights on my tree are on all day long because we are all longing for light at the end of this seemingly unending year of fear and tragedy and injustice and hardship. We are weary from traveling through these past nine months and maybe even before then. And while we can start to see the promise of effective vaccines and the ability to gather safely with loved ones in the future, we know that the road ahead is not without challenge. 
but this is where God exists. God is made known to us in a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. This is the world that God came to dwell in, the reality of our lives that God came to be part of. God is present in the majesty of the stars and angels singing praises and in the fields with the shepherds and the sheep. In the big moments and the small ones, however unexpected they may be. I pray that this Christmas, whatever it looks like for you and your family, that you would experience God's love made known to us in Jesus Christ. And that in all the days ahead, whatever they hold, that the hope, peace, joy, and love brought about by his birth would be made real in your life. Amen. stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error burning, till he appeared and the soul Please.
Good evening, my name is Sarah Gould. In sending us Jesus to be born of Mary, God's word became flesh, and we have seen a new and radiant vision of God's glory. On this night, as we celebrate the gift of Jesus' birth and prepare to live into that good news, we are invited to respond and give back some of the gifts that we have to share because of God's goodness. So let us give joyfully and generously, praying that what we give will be used to further God's work here in this place and out in the world. There are several ways you can give back. You can go to the church's website at alpharettaprez.com and click on the Give button. You can text the keyword Alpharetta Prez to 73256, or you can mail a check to the church office. The address is on the website. Thank you for your gifts and the support you give to APC's ministry. When we celebrate communion, we boldly proclaim our hope in our God whose grace is unending for each of us and for all the world. We show up just as we are, and we are reminded that this is how our God welcomes us. For God's love for us was made known in the most inconvenient and unexpected of ways in the birth of Jesus. Whatever table you find yourself at today, know that it belongs to Christ. It is Christ who invites us to it, and that this meal unites us with him and with each other. This is the feast of God for the people of God, and there is room for all of us. It is right and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise to our holy God, creator and ruler of the universe. Let us pray. O oh God, you created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and called us to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful and turned from your ways, you did not forsake us. Your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and sent prophets to call us back to your way. You sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. In him, your word dwelling with you from all eternity became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth, and we beheld your glory, Emmanuel, God with us. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born in humility, he came to rule over all. Helpless as an infant, he showed the power of your love. Poor in things of the world, he brought the wealth of your grace. Rejected by many, he welcomed all who sought him. In his dying and rising, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this juice, joyfully celebrating his dying and rising, as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and juice. By your spirit, make us one with Christ that, me, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Give us courage to speak his truth, seek his justice, and love with his love. Keep us faithful in your service. Through Christ, with Christ, and in the name of Christ, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. 
and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Friends, I invite you now to share of the bread and the cup in your home, giving thanks for the gift of God's love and grace made known to us in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the bread of life and the cup of salvation for all of God's people, and that means each of you. Alleluia and amen. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Isaiah 60 reads, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. May you experience and know that Christ is the light of the world. And may that knowledge guide you and guide you to live into the good news of great joy of Jesus' birth. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Amen. <laughs>